I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support the channel, please go check out the link in the description for some awesome TGS merch. So about 10 years ago, Beretta made the SV10, and then a few years later, took it out of production. However, a lot of what we're about to look at inside this SV10 now translate into the 690 series. So this is the gun that bridges the gap between the 680 and 690. This is the SV10, let's go. So this is a Perennia 3, this is the game version, however you also have the Prevail which is the sporter version. But what we're going to talk about, which is a lot of the technical aspects more than the aesthetics or anything like that, translates between the pair. So what happened? Well, obviously Beretta were really, really famed for the 680 series and that had been going for years and years and years. I mean, how do you improve upon that? You can't really, and a lot of people are catching up with them in terms of quality, da 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 da, -da. and it's, well. Business, isn't it? Development. So they came up with this. A complete change of direction. Almost, sort of, when we we'll look at that. New technology, new ideas, new thoughts. Let's talk through some of them. So, let's start with the forend. And I guess if we'd done this at the time, and we would probably be breaking technology, but here we go. The forend has nano ceramic coating. That's quite cool. Um, it doesn't make, me, make a huge amount of difference, but it does mean that they didn't rust. Not that they've ever had a problem with forend rusting anyway. The first similarity you've seen between this and 690 is that you have this little section here is sprung loaded, it's not sprung loaded, it's got some Belleville washers on it, so it's washer loaded if you like. It's interchangeable. It is interchangeable in terms of pressure so that you can maintain a bit like the spring in the 690 and now the, oh, it says now the 694 with a slightly different one, you can make that gun open and close harder by adjusting. Clever, hey. Uh, apart from that you had a different spring but it is on a one-piece forend. More importantly, the forend iron is now made from alloy. Um, again, which was transferred into the 690 series. Bigger, stronger, different. Let's move on. Uh, it's also a semi-beaver semi tail, which was a bit of a hark back to the past on them. And I, I really like it for one. I was always a fan of this kind of forend style. You've got enough that you can get positive hold points, no tulips, you're not gonna bash it, and well, I'm a fan anyway. The barrels were unexotic in themselves and various technologies are available throughout their barrels regarding whether you're buying a perennial or a prevail, so they didn't really update or change anything there. However, something you will notice that harks back over to the 690, or at least the early 690s, which they have subsequently done away with, is this. The ejectors are turn offable, so you can take that, twist it, and it will turn your ejectors off if you want to do so. There is a practical application for that, obviously. Uh, and that's how you take them out. You need to push these all the way through and pull that bit out there. That translated into the 690s, I said. However, they've gone away with it, and now they've got the little button, a little bit like a greenie, if you like. Um, I do, really. Brilliant. But that was less than brilliant. Mostly because these little bits here have two little O-rings on the inside, and when those O-rings age, or die, or break, uh, the ejectors will turn on and off at will. However, it's a nice theory but not one that lasted, given that I don't think that many people actually want to turn off their ejectors. The action is where we see most of the differences, so let's go. Before we get there, the stock is a uh, fairly standard Beretta stock. There was a lot of variants and so on and so forth. The biggest difference is this, the magic stock hole of doom. You get a Torx, you put it in, it was supplied with one, you undo it, and lo and behold, stock pulls off, just like that. Uh, what you have there is a, a bit that locks into the back of this tail here as opposed to a traditional stock bolt. There's benefits, there's positives, there's negatives, but mainly there are negatives. But we're not getting into those yet, because actually they don't, well, no one can hear those at all, because it doesn't really matter. Uh, again, because these guns don't really exist anymore. Something you will notice is the heading up of the stock is very different, and actually, they, they did keep a bit of Beretta style there. They kept a bit of Beretta style, but they have, I reckon, upgraded the style. I thought these guns looked brilliant, if nothing else. Certainly the Perennia 3. The Prevail didn't do a lot for me, but the Perennia 3 really did. I liked it a lot. Anyway, so things that did change. Uh, the safety catch, different shape, although, again, 
nowadays it looks like a 690 Beretta safety catch, so it doesn't really look any different. Uh, the top lever is shortened, oversized, made more bulbous and a bit more rounded. Different hinge pin style completely. I say different hinge pin style completely. A different hinge pin style, different action style, different lockups here. The whole thing was more rounded, a little bit more sleek aesthetically, if nothing else. The real difference uh, that you'll see, A, actually, the, the lock and bolts are redesigned as well. In fact, the whole thing was a complete redesign-ish. Uh, because if we do look at the trig unit, you'll notice that essentially, if you put that next to a 680 trig unit, a lot of the parts back to out here are fairly similar. From there, you have a rocker hidden in the back, very 690, and there's a lot of 690-ish things around about this gun. But this, as I said, is the bridging gap. And if I put a 680 there, the Pavarini, I said SV10 there, and a 692 there, they do fall into each other, just. Key differences between this and the other is the way that the actual trigger unit holds in. The trigger guard is a different shape, the whole trigger unit is slightly shorter, and I believe, I'm not entirely sure if it is with this, but I remember in the SV10 they put a titanium trigger in. It's cool, isn't it? I, mean, I can't think of many other reasons to do it. Weight saving maybe, but I can't imagine that weight saving was that big. So. Things that are different about this. Well, firstly, instead of having machined ears on the back on this action here, you've got a little plate that holds your, your mainsprings. A little plate that holds your mainsprings. You have a little rocker here that just contains your top lever ever slow and actually acts as a separate safety as opposed to having that built onto the safety catch. Uh, the thing that I loved and loathed about this gun is this, instead of having a top lever screw, which you have, so on a 680 you have one screw there, two screws there, and then your trigger unit will fall out. Again, really quite simple engineering. And on the 690 you have one screw there and the whole thing pops out. On this, it adds to the magic that you can just undo that and the whole thing will pop out. Bloody clever, I think. However, it didn't last that long and people didn't like it. So guess what, they stopped doing it which is a shame, it really is a shame. And because a lot of these things were really a step into the world of the unknown, you know, there's conventional gun making, and so you look at a Browning and a Beretta and so on and so forth, and most of those designs have been around for hundreds of years. These guys used sort of canning technology and all sorts of other cool stuff to try something new. And, well, they were well-ish received, they weren't superbly well received, you know, the problem is they were more money and they looked slightly different and they were different and rumours started and they had a couple of early doors, reliability issues and blah blah blah. But anyway, that's by the by. The, they stopped doing them fairly shortly after starting making them, which was really sad uh, because I really thought they were a good looking gun, however much they do have their certain little niggles. Anyway, so what they did is they, they sort of took some of the tech half back to the 680 and retained a lot of the other stuff and then banged out the 690 series shortly after discontinuing these, even though we ended up with a slight crossover period because of the way the manufacturing works. Needless to say, this is a gorgeous gun. Uh, I think we can all agree that actually, in terms of style, it's a more stylish gun than anything else. There's not a surface that's uncovered. And it, it does not look very Beretta. I think that's a lot of the issues that they had, certainly with certain people's opinions, is that it was not particularly Beretta. I genuinely think that the Perennia 3 is one of the prettiest guns Beretta's ever made. There you go, put it out there. And, you know, if that, that's as simple as that. Anyway, uh, before we finish, let's talk about some of the potential issues you can get with the SV10 series. I say issues, by issues don't actually mean issues because they don't really have that many issues at all. Except for the fact that the whole extractor system was just not great. Most of which was fixed under warranty, but we still see them coming back today with timing issues, extractor issues, o-ring issues, and obviously they kept a lot of them and that was a more expensive way of producing ejectors so it was kind of added to the price of the gun which is part of the other reason part with, it's actually part of my issue section on this in my head actually is that they were just too much money because ironically they were only like 1700 quid which now seeing as a Beretta Silver Pigeon one is near on that sort of money anyway actually they look like great value seeing as you've got the Q stock and the Q stock is a nice feature you have the quick detachable trigger unit that's a nice feature you have the extractors there's less of a nice feature but they were a nice feature at the time you know, everything from the, the, the sort of the ease of which, because they extended that lever, the ease of which you could take it off, the tightness that it gave you, actually is a really nicely priced 690, which is now 2,200 quid. And yes, this is all like seven or eight years ago now, so prices have changed, but I do feel like Brits have gone up quite a bit. 
I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily because everything's gone up quite a bit in the last 10 years. But I feel like if this was placed in the market today, it would go down a bit better. It would go down a bit better. Potentially, but then probably not. And that's probably why they stopped doing it in the first place. But that was my take on the SV10. I really like them. Um, but I don't really like them that much, I guess is the answer. I like looking at them. Uh, in terms of handling and shooting, again, they come in all shapes and sizes. Guess what? <laughs> the little ejector block had changed itself onto not eject, um, which is fine. Well, that's that. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, and if you've got any questions about it, please let us know. In terms of handling and balance, this particular SV10 III, well, they were pretty foreign happy. But this is back, again, 10 years ago when Beretta really was making a run of guns that were a little bit different, maybe. They stand up to good abuse. Do expect some ejector issues. Buy some spare ejector O-rings because you're gonna need them at some point if you intend on buying one of these. Or at least just replace them as a matter of course as soon as you buy it. So at least you know where you stand. Apart from that, it's a damn good looking gun. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Take care, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.